Back in mid-May of 2025, I began to see YouTube videos announcing and demonstrating Moog's new small form Moog Messenger Analog Synthesizer. I had a number of VST instruments, VST standing for Virtual Studio Technology, meaning software instruments ranging from synths to pianos to orchestral instruments, pretty much anything that can make a sound, but the idea of a real hands-on hardware audio synthesizer was very appealing, especially a Moog analog synth equipped with a very capable ARP sequencer. I went ahead on May 14, 2025, and purchased the synth online knowing it would not ship till early June. On June 5, 2025, the Moog Messenger arrived at my door and I began the process of setting up my new Moog Messenger and integrating it into my Logic Pro setup and workflow. I wasn't totally clear on how this new external hardware synth would connect up to my existing gear but after watching some videos on Logic Pro and external synths, I had a general idea. I already owned an 88 key MIDI controller keyboard, my native instrument's Complete Control S88. After some fumbling around, I finally got everything working correctly. So I decided to make this video showing and explaining the entire setup process as clearly as I can present it those viewers who may be desiring to add an external synth to their Logic Pro workflow. If we look at the rear panel of the Moog Messenger, we will find the two ports that we will use to connect the synth to the computer and audio interface. The USB-C port is shown here, and the audio out port is shown here. To connect the Moog Messenger to the computer, in order to implement its MIDI capabilities, we will use the USB-C port. For this connection, I have just used a standard Apple braided USB-C cable to connect the Moog synth to one of the front USB-C ports on my Mac Mini. To connect the synth to my audio interface, I am using a standard quarter inch TS audio cable that runs from the audio port out of the Moog Messenger, as shown here, to the number one in port on my audio interface with the line instrument switch set to line. With these two cables connecting the computer and audio interface to the Moog Messenger, we are ready to move on to the software side of the process, our DAW or digital audio workstation, in my case, Logic Pro. Here inside the DAW, Logic Pro is shown here, we will create a track where the DAW and Moog Messenger can communicate with each other. This track will allow us to hear the incoming audio or sound from the Moog Messenger. The track we are creating here is only for recording MIDI data. We will need a separate audio track in order to record audio from the Moog Messenger. Here in the main tracks window, we are going to set up the MIDI track first. We will create this MIDI track by clicking this plus icon in the upper left hand corner of the main tracks window. We are presented with the create new track window, which offers us four choices, a MIDI track, a pattern track, a session player track, and an audio track. For our case, we want a MIDI track. We will choose the external instrument option under the MIDI selection. Here we see on the right side of the window under MIDI destinations, the Moog Messenger has already been chosen, but you have the option to choose another destination if needed. Logic Pro is able to recognize that the Moog Messenger is connected to the computer via the USB-C connection. We can also see here at the audio input option on the left side of the window that Logic Pro has also assigned the input one channel of my audio interface for routing the audio from Moog Messenger to Logic Pro. I then click the create button in the lower right hand corner of the window to create the MIDI track for the Moog Messenger. 
Now back in the main track's window, we see the external instrument panel, which shows the Moog Messenger has been added to our track count. You can always access this window later if you need to make any changes to a given parameter. So this is our Moog Messenger MIDI channel. It will only record MIDI data. No audio is recorded to this channel. To test that the synth is connected to the Mac Mini and Logic Pro, I press a few keys on the Moog Messenger keyboard and we can see by the audio meter that the sound is coming into Logic Pro, so all is good there. If I want to record the actual audio from the Moog Messenger, I can then create an audio track. I go back and hit the plus button again and get the create new track window, where I will this time choose an audio track, choosing the mic or line option, which is what we want for connecting to the Moog Messenger. We can also see here that the audio input again will be input one. We now have our audio channel for recording audio from the Moog Messenger. Here, as indicated by the audio meters, we can see that the audio and MIDI information from the Moog Messenger is being communicated to Logic Pro. As a test, I click the red record button and Logic Pro begins recording both the MIDI and audio as shown here. For something like a MIDI keyboard, I find it is much easier to just record the MIDI track first. Then if I make an error in performance, I can go back and correct the MIDI data, then just play back the corrected MIDI track and record the actual audio from that performance saves a lot of hassle if your keyboard chops aren't up to par. So that is basically how you get an external instrument, such as the Moog Messenger, recorded into Logic Pro. Hope this helps if you are interested, as I was, about getting software and hardware working together in a small music studio setup.